Sam, you well? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Just finished another award-winning show, and uh, and that was it. <laughs> On the award-winning already. That's good, yeah, well, telling facts. Love right. it. Right, I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to ask you any boring questions, right? Good. I'm going to ask you questions about you. I'm curious, same, ask every guest, right? What, what was what was Tom like at high school? Um, I was neither a, a SWAT, got my kind of old grades and my hires and that, and I wasn't a daft either, but uh, I was school captain, so that meant I was in charge of the tuck shop, which was uh, the dream job for MD at school age. You'd go to the, uh, the big uh, cash and carry, right. uh, a wee short taxi ride for Bray Turst High School in Motherwell and uh, and it was great and i would determine all oh, the power i would determine what flavor of crisps <laughs> the rest of the school go i'd determine what sweeties they got and all the big top hatters at a time like skull crushers which are probably only two pence any big white chocolate with the, the creamy filling sweeties uh, gold bullion bars wee toffee bars and kind of gold foil uh, and I'd say right we're going to have them this week we're going to have that I was like Michael Jackson gone shopping in that documentary I'll have three of those five of those two of those so the power that gave you and what it also did because you were in charge of the tuck shop uh, in sixth year um, you had the keys right. to the tuck shop right so I don't mean like going in for the Billy Bunny or stuff and eating all the crisps and all that, you know. But it was like a wee gang hut. Right. As much as we had the, what was it called then, the the six-year common room, mm -hmm. you had that and a wee pool table in it and a wee portable telly. And, uh, but you had the key for the talk shop and we'd get in there and that's where we'd get the wee tape recorder in and listen to things like Derek and Clive if you're familiar with them, Peter Never Cook and Dudley Moore. No. Look them up, right? right? Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, two comedy greats. Late, late on in their careers, they did these characters, Derek and Clive, and they were just talking shite to each other, mm -hmm. but it was beyond X-rated, right? right? But it was very, very funny. And these, in that era, 86, 87, these tapes were all doing around, right? right? A bit like, in the same time, only an excuse mm -hmm. had just started. And that was the audio tapes. Right. Yeah. That originally. Mm -hmm. And they all did the rounds as well. So that was the other great thing about the talk shop. So yeah, spent a lot of my time in the talk shop at uh, Braytorst High School, uh, which obviously was a it was a you know, it was a I can't even kid you on it, it was a pretty rough school. Mm -hmm. Um school magazine had an obituary column. <laughs> that's that's true. It was uh, one of the places. But no, it was great, and I'm proud to say that amongst others, uh folk that came out of Braytorst High you had Elaine C. Smith right. was a pupil there. You had Gary McAllister. You had Ian Ferguson, who scored Motherwell's opener mm -hmm. in the 91 Cup final, man of many clubs. You had uh, James Weir, or Jim Weir, right. as football calls him, um, who, Hamilton Aki's legend, uh, St. Johnston legend. He was at Hearts. Uh, <laughs> and he's now running a boozer. Funnily enough, called the King James up in uh, Perth. I was right. up there the other week. So there was a few that came through the right. ranks at uh, Braytorst, you know. Um, so I, 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 warm memories of being at my school, right. and I love it. Some folks say, oh, I'd hate that, or I'd be embarrassed or that. <clears throat> I've been asked back quite a few times, mm -hmm. prize given, or a right. wee chat to some of the pupils. I, I love doing that. Aye. And it's only, I don't know if you've done it, but if you go back to your old school, it suddenly seems tiny. Aye. Whereas when you were a kid, school was a big giant place, you know, Aye. but no that at all. What did you, see when you were getting to the end of high school, what, what did you fancy then job wise? What was in the, or did you have a plan or were you just? Tuck shop management. <laughs> And just kind of get from one school to another. Yeah, I think these would sell better. And don't don't buy scampi fries. Nobody likes them. Get bacon fries. I could have done all that stuff, you know. But uh, no, I, my my best subject by a country mile at school was English. Right. And uh, even to this day, I tend to be a terrible pedant when it comes to all things grammar. Mm -hmm. But um, I was fairly good at English. I loved the written word. And when I was still at school. Uh, I was writing some wee kind of jokes and sketches and stuff and submitting them to some radio shows just as like a wee hobby mm -hmm. and then a couple of like sketch shows topical shows on Radio 2 and Radio 4 used some of the stuff so this was a big deal because right. I was still at school and all that and like the Motherwell Times made a big deal and all that and the school made a big right. deal you know but it was the kind of thing that I enjoyed so I then uh, got a wee hook in with BBC Scotland mm -hmm. 
Um, an old mentor of mine then, Philip Duffer, who uh, created Only an Excuse uh, and wrote a hell of a lot of it for his wee pal Jonathan Watson and Tony Roper. Um, because I was mad about the football, it was great. Uh, I managed to be able to write some lines here and there for that. I then went to Napier College mm -hmm. when it was still a college when I left the school, but I was uh, I, I was too keen and too excited about doing the writing for right. all these shows. I took my half the ball with a with a college, and about three or four months in, I think in football parlance, they'd say that we mutually agreed <laughs> uh, to split. <laughs> they never saw hiding or hearing me. And then when I explained to them why they rarely saw hiding or hearing me, they said, well, you know, maybe that's something that you should have a go at then, right. you know, and no kid yourself on with this. So I did, and I battered away and I battered away, and then thanks to that, getting a few bits and pieces on the radio and on the telly and stuff, um, with sketch shows of which there were plenty back in the day, um, naked video, Scotch and Ryan, and you had loads of things down south, mm -hmm. Hale and Pace, Bobby Davro, Les Dennis, Little and Large, all these names for way back when. Um, a variety of things like that, and being keen again on the, the written word, I managed to get a foot in the door with the Evening Times in Glasgow now, the Glasgow Times, mm -hmm. and uh, and they gave me a wee strip column on a Monday right. uh, called Fan Zone. Now, that was good timing because fanzines mm -hmm. were all their age at the uh, time. This is a pre internet age, remember, right? And uh, every club had their paper uh, yeah, that's right. fanzine, you know? So it was good to tap into that because mine was very much a wee tongue, tongue in cheek, humorous column about the week's football. And the reason it worked, and what was probably a big thing in helping me career wise, always wrote it for the perspective of a Motherwell fan. Mm -hmm. And this was in ostensibly a Glasgow paper yeah. where the vast majority of people reading it either supported Rangers or Celtic, mm -hmm. or maybe a smarter in a Partick this or mm -hmm. Clyde fans or whatever, Queen's Park, right? But it was largely Rangers and Celtic. So because I had little time for either of them and I could freely take the piss <laughs> out of both of them, then it worked a treat because I was never ever seen to be Side and we them. Aye. That wouldn't have lasted Aye. a minute, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, but so uh, as a result of that, uh, that helped get me noticed. And then after three years of being in the Evening Times, and I was still doing all the other wee kind of writing gigs here and there, far from, far from lucrative, right? Mm -hmm. And indeed, with my wee strap column in the Times when I started there, it was, it was washers, you know. But then through to 94, I got a call for the BBC. Uh, they were going to start a programme called Off the Ball. Uh, they wanted it to be a wee bit irreverent and a wee bit more fan based and all that. Mm -hmm. Then the kind of maybe straight laced, kind of starchy mm -hmm. football coverage. It had been on uh, BBC Radio Scotland at the time. So the wee producer, Alan Depolette, always warmly thank him for giving me a wee start there. He drafted in myself. Greg Hemp, Paul, and Sanjeev Coley. Right. Where are they now? <laughs> no, <laughs> heard I'm them. no here. heard them. <laughs> I'm doing a fucking podcast <laughs> in my free time. They're away gallivanting in Monaco or something when they're still game riches. But no, uh, Greg and Sanjeev come in. Greg was a host there. He'd done wee bits and bobs with Radio Scotland. So mm -hmm. they brought him in to host a show off the ball. Me and Sanjeev were at the other end of uh, the table. And uh, and we did a year of that, and it, it, it undoubtedly made an impact because we were a lot away with murder and all the rest there, and there hadn't been anything like it on Radio Scotland before, and we were un un unquestionably mm -hmm. taking our lead for the irreverence of like only an excuse, no. you know. And uh, but we did that for one year, and then after the year, as much as the show had made a wee bit of a name for itself, and it was only half an hour. Uh, I think half five to six mm -hmm. after all the football half an hour that's all we had um, and after a year they thought right there's definitely something there but Greg by his own admission wasn't a diehard football fan mm -hmm. right Sanjeev ditto right I was the only one who had an issue getting into the old Queen Margaret Drive studios for half five because I'd be out at the mother again ah, right, and I'd okay. try to get back in Aye. time and all the rest of it, you know. So I was kind of the, the, the diehard uh, fan. Uh, so they drafted in Stuart 
for the new season. Mm -hmm. Stuart had been doing a wee bit of late night stuff involving a kind of phone-in element on Radio 5 Live. Right. Did you know each other before uh, it? No. No. They brought in Stuart for August 1995, it would have been. And only because I had been part of the show the previous year, because they had this idea it was going to be like Zoo Radio, an expression that I hate, mm -hmm. and they were going to revolve the guests on it, you know, and right. it maybe thought that they would go back to, oh, mm -hmm. well, thanks, that was great, we'll get you back in in mm -hmm. three weeks, you know. So only because I'd been part and parcel of the show in the first year, it started off with me and Stuart. Right. And thankfully we had to off, and to the end up that Stuart, God bless him, he said to the producer after our first show, he says, you know, I think me and Tam had a wee bit of, a wee bit of chemistry there mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, and I get brought in the next week and then the next week and then, and, mm -hmm. and, then, and that was us, you know, and in terms of me and Stuart, me and Stuart, I, we knew of each other. Mm -hmm. The reason for that being Stuart at this point was already popping up in late night arty farty shows right. maybe we shades on indoors and <laughs> right. all that talking about the recent art exhibition that had opened in Being Glasgow edgy and, that. Right. Aye. <laughs> and I only because of Stuart flying up and down uh, to London and mm -hmm. stuff like that he used to see the evening times on a Monday right? and he would read my column and then when I met him he says oh I loved reading your column and it was a change for all the usual shite and mm -hmm. all that and you're having a go at Rangers and Celtic so that was as much as we knew of each other but when we analysed it, and it was some years later about why it seemed to work, we actually had very, very similar backgrounds. We we, we, we both, we, we I, you know, no one sob stories, but mm -hmm. we both really, really quite stark upbringings mm -hmm. where ni neither of our parents had a penny. Mm -hmm. You know, Stuart in a house and scheme in Perth, me in a house and scheme in uh, Motherwell. And uh, we didn't have much, but our parents gave us everything that they could. And um, we both, you know, uh, supported the, a wee diddy team, mm -hmm. which I think was crucial. A wee bit like me saying, writing a column as a Motherwell fan and having a go at Celtic and Rangers, the balance was good. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we're here 30 years later, when it was me and Stuart as Motherwell St. Johnson fans, able to have a go at not just Celtic Rangers, yeah, but yeah. the rest of Scottish football and beyond. But I think that's how the dynamic the chemistry, whatever you want to call it, was just about right. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, we didn't. We, we literally, it's weird when I think back, folk can never believe it, but we met. Ah, yeah, I'm Tam. Oh, hello, I'm Stuart. We met on the morning of that first show, which went on air at half 12, I think it was back then. Uh, and we met at maybe half nine in the morning in the BBC. And then we were on air Aye. three hours later, and we've been here ever since. So, Really, really strange. Ah, yeah, it's bizarre. But, but, but see, if they're having a show that lasts, and you know yourself, there's shows that kind of, more so in a football world, that come and disappear after a year Aye. or two. Why, why do you think it's been so successful for such a long I, period? I think we're able to, as much as folk would say, oh, I've been listening to that, uh, your detractors, your critics, mm -hmm. folk on websites and on social media, anonymous Aye. names, none of that, you know, and who, you know, maybe during the week massage their granny's feet as I was saying <laughs> return for getting a top up on their phone to try and keep them no picture profile thinking they're in. relevant you know for the guys like that guys guys who say oh, I've never listened to that for years but you know they listen Aye. every week because some of the stuff they pick you up when you think I thought you didn't listen to this <laughs> oh, well, I'm a pal to help me you know <laughs> but anyway as much as guys like that would say oh same old shit I've been listening to that 30 years and they never ever change it no the whole show's always evolved we might keep the same frame of the show i.e it's me and stuart i'm other one st johnson fan presenting it we have one or two guests in uh we will look through the week's events we will do a team of the week we will have a song he plays out whatever else mm -hmm. but that's just the template mm -hmm. or as stuart would say that is the canvas on which we draw <laughs> right but that's the template and but everyone always changes because if i look back at what we were talking about we've only just finished in the program today and we, we, we started off with launching into Brendan Rodgers and talking about how Celtic are victimised by the referee. Uh, Celtic who have won 11 out of 12 titles, who last year's treble winners, a quadruple treble before that, one penalty awarded against them this year, one red card flashed at a player, victimised, right? Now, that has not been a story that has ever come up. Brendan mm -hmm. Rodgers 
claiming Celtic are victimised. So that immediately makes today's show fresh. Yeah. Because you're immediately having it. And, and the great thing about Scottish football, even when we do shows, the first time we would have done shows over a summer period, because we're effectively on the whole year and we take our holidays kind of independently mm -hmm. and that. But the first time we'd have been on our summer period, when it was one of the summers, no European Championships, no World Cup, all mm -hmm. that. And you think, oh, what are we going to talk about? But as you know yourself, Scottish football does not yeah, stop. It's always something. There's always a story. So the, again, the the material within the show, the content within the show. Thankfully, Scottish football is so vibrant and so farcical at times that we're never ever short yeah, of yeah. talking about stuff. So yeah, the the the, the format of the show has changed very very little down through years probably the biggest change and that's not today with us that's mainly today with modern technology we don't we, we did always take phone calls mm -hmm. traditionally for our, what the first 10 years of the show maybe the pre-football show the lunchtime show would have been us chat stuff like that laugh with the guests and then we would come on after the football and that would be your classic phone in show right. right but ever since the advent you know I'm going back to from what 98 onwards when it's meant to be seen as the internet mm -hmm. era uh, texts and emails yeah, were a much I think sharper way of letting the audience have their say because no harm in them but and you can still hear it now in phone and shows you'll get guys that would have come on uh, uh, what is that me moan <laughs> and it's like dead air <laughs> Stuart I was Aye. saying Stuart is that you no it's Tam it's that and it just uh, some of it sounded awful so we were never so happy when it, we, I mean, it was, it, we, we didn't dictate us, but mm -hmm. when you gradually realised, 98 maybe onwards, that there are more and more folk are now emailing Aye. or texting the Aye. show than they would have wanted to phone. Aye. And it was easier for folk as well. Maybe a guy sitting in the passenger seat coming back for I a game. I just fire a message. And, you know, or a guy going to the game Aye. now. In fact, we did the Saturday lunchtime and the Sunday lunchtime. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, we even had, when we first came on air today, at 12, Aberdeen Kelly was kicking off at 12.15 mm -hmm. and we'd quite a few Aberdeen and Kelly fans by that right. point had already contacted the show. They're maybe just getting out of their car mm -hmm. at Petodre right. into the game and they've bashed us mm -hmm. in a wee line, you know. Um, so that's great and it's very, very manageable. It becomes almost part of my skill set, if you like, because your brain now, I've learned how to speed read, for example. Mm -hmm. I'll always get the a right wedge of the texts and emails coming in that mm -hmm. have been printed off. And then our runner on the show today, it was young Laura. She'll come in, hand me a wedge of these. And you, you've not got time to methodically yeah, look through all. every single one, because thankfully we get loads. But you, you quickly learn to look for key words that leap off a page, or even, dare I say it, names of uh, listeners, mm -hmm. even pseudonyms that you become familiar with. And you know that they are responsible by and large for good material yep. so if I see their name I think oh that's so be good Aye. and you put it at the top of the pile right uh, but oh, texts and emails they're, they're just so much more manageable mm -hmm. and I think it makes for a cleaner quicker show Aye. because the best thing that um, any guest in our show will say and trust me this is a feather in their cap particularly folk that have done other radio shows maybe even their own radio shows mm -hmm. the show may be finished and they'll say is that it that was, that was awfully fast. That was, and that's two hours of show we're doing. And that's, I think, because I want it to be like that. And, I, you know, and if anybody, the bit of criticism I'll get that I never bother my arse with, because I think it's positive criticism. If folks say, oh, Tam and Stuart, I'm fucking talking over guests and all that, mm -hmm. I'm butting in or that. That's fine, because if you're in a pub having a conversation about the fact, but that's all the ways, the always way for the outset, I've hopefully tried to make it sound. You don't sit back and just let the other gentleman Aye. having his pint to finish his point. Aye. You jump in, Aye. say, ah, oh, you're talking shit, and you, you talk over each other. But it turns so, into a rammy, doesn't it? Exactly. It's... So I, I make no bones about that. I have no no qualms about, you know, butting in and guess or jumping in to disagree mm -hmm. with them. Or, it doesn't matter if they're full flow, because it's it wouldn't be natural otherwise. Aye. A wee bit like, when for, I, I can't believe how they still say that but folk would say do you do you read a script Tom? i thought <laughs> how would that work now all we've got i have never had 
and my fingertips in 30 years, what you would call a script. Mm -hmm. Stuart has always had what you would call a script, but right. all that is is timelines for when he's mm -hmm. to go to the news. Yep. And then he falls in all the gaps, or when he's to go to, or we're going to play in a sting about sports sound, mm -hmm. or we're going to play in a wee bit about Doctor Who, you know, you get these mad yeah. things that you go to play in within a BBC show. And that's what he's got. It's not a script. Nobody would be reading it. This week, Brendan Rogers said that he thinks Celtic are victimised. It would just sound awful. Aye. So, aye, so we don't have a script, and we also for MD it says, they're not, it's normally Stuart gets us. Where, where, where's Tom the night, Stuart? If he's out making his own business and he gets into a taxi, oh, where's Tom the night? We are not fucking joined at the hip. <laughs> uh, we have very much our own life since day one. We've all our own things today in life. Mm -hmm. And another reason that you're saying why is the show last it, the analogy I always offer for that is that we all know people, married couples, who don't spend their entire life in each other's pockets. Aye. Might be a married couple and one of them, maybe two of them work away from home mm -hmm. and they get back together and it's all fresh and bubbly Aye. and nice and nice. So we bought that with me and Stuart because um, Stuart, whether it's been Channel 4 or whether it's been when he then his books and locking himself in a room to write his books and all that. We don't, it, it, us socialising through the week, honestly, it is rare, and Aye. I mean rare, mm -hmm. looking at a 30 year period, will very, very, very sparingly hook up for a curry or something, mm -hmm. you know, that very sparingly. But I think that might have uh, part today with the success of the programme because Aye. when we do come in, <clears throat> we'll both come in here Saturday morning, let's say half nine, and the first half hour, the first cup of coffee, that's mainly a wee catch up about what's been happening Aye. that week at Johnston, Motherwell. What we've been up to personally, the day I came in, a mutual pal, it was mm. his 60th birthday yesterday, I was doing the air races, a day out. I'm keeping Stuart up to speed with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're talking about any idle gossip that we've heard in here uh, through the week, you know what I mean? Uh, so we have a right good catch up and only then would we then say, right, and I've always got my sheets. I'm quite meticulous with that, quite OCD, but because I've always worked with newspapers, um, I've got quite a breakdown of all the stories of the week, mm -hmm. shorthand version. So then once we're ready to go, I'll say to Stuart and our producer, I'll say, right, and I'll work my way back for the Saturday, back through the week, all the stuff that's happened, Aye. and then we'll pick four things uh, for that week. We'll pick something, a theme for the team of the week, uh, and we'll pick someday that's been in the news for the music world, uh, for that person or group, uh, one of their songs to play us out at mm -hmm. the end of the show. And that's it. And then we go on air. And other than scribbling down a few notes on each of the topics that we're going to talk about, um, then, you know, and that, you know, that like for today, mm -hmm. now, there's the notes I've made today with Keith Lasley and the musician Dean Owens on. Uh, for the week in football, we had uh, Celtic claiming to be victimised. Uh, we're talking about mixed loyalties a day. Keith, model legend, going to St Marin mm -hmm. as uh, chief exec. So a couple of lines there about that. Rock, pop and your club, Dean Owen. Uh, Dean Owens, a uh, Harps fan, Felith, now a Berwick Rangers fan. So I'm saying, right, who's all the other great uh, music artists that you would associate with your club? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then a wee hang, Billy Connolly saying that he wants to be buried up and in Versnade and uh, Loch Lomond. So an easy one for us is where would your final resting be, uh, resting place be? Have you had a relative that got their ashes scattered on the park and then like that, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, and that's it. And then I've always got a wee sidebar, not whenever going to run out of stuff, uh, but other stuff that's maybe happened this week. Uh, the spat with Douglas Ross in Holyrood. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, Sadly, this week, a great young lad in here that passed away. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have seen, seen that. that, Nick Sheridan. Took a note of that, made sure we paid our own wee tribute. Then you had silly stories like Rupert Murdoch at 92, getting engaged to be married for the sixth time. <sighs> uh, you know, there's all this stuff there, Neil Warnock under pressure. You know, there's loads of stuff. So mm -hmm. it just means that you can always refer to that. But that, for him that says a script, um, that, 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 that's kind of that, you know, and that's that. And I would like to think as well, and indeed we've done it. There was one day that, um, I can't mind the reason for it, it was a few years ago now, and something crashed 
techie wise on sports sound, something major. Like the whole studio wasn't working or that. <clears throat> and we were on air and we get the call through about five to two. We are finishing at two. Can you stay on air to three? Right? They they were panicking, they thought as long as we can get everything fixed for the football starting mm -hmm. at three. And right away we didn't it wasn't like oh aye. said I hey bother. And away we went and that was that. And then other cause other it's not like you even stick rigid like the four things that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. There's always other things come out of maybe something that the guest says aye. or something that comes out of one of the topics that takes us down another wee road. So we just kinda would have elongated and taken advantage of stuff like that. So, you know, the bottom line is with 30 years experience, mm -hmm. if you sat us in front of a microphone, we'll do you a show, Aye. you know what I mean? Aye. It's not any hassle, you know? And I mean, because I get that, it's experience because I, when I go out in a day, gigs myself, like, like of which I've, I've got a thing on tonight. If I go, I, I sometimes need a hook to get me off stage mm -hmm. when I'm up doing a, <laughs> my one man thing. And that's only because I, I, I've got all that in my head. And I've got so many stories and jokes and anecdotes and all the rest there. Mm. And thankfully, it'll happen eventually. <laughs> but because I've still got my marbles and because my brain still operates, um, then that, that's easy peasy. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the shows I think folk like, in terms of folk, I would say, ah, the shows, they must sound the same now as they did 30 years ago. Not entirely correct, right? But there's a certain comfort to be had. Now, when I think of radio shows, for example, that I like tuning into, mm -hmm. a lot of them haven't really changed much down through the years. But I'll tune into them, and there's that comfort there. And that's unquestionably the way that a lot of listeners feel about us. And that came to the fore quite dramatically, quite emotively, if you like, during lockdown. Mm -hmm. Because me and Stuart, thankfully, so many people had a hard time yet. They, they weren't able to work. Mm -hmm. A lot of folk who, for whatever reason, couldn't get furlough money, didn't have any money. Uh, there was all sorts of stuff going on. We were, we were very, very lucky. We were still able to come in here and do the shows. We didn't have any guests mm -hmm. in the studio. Aye. That was banned. <clears throat> but me and Stuart could easily keep our two metre mm -hmm. distance, as were the rules. And we were able to go in with the shows and we'd never has, had praise like it. When we were doing them, was folks saying, oh, uh, you know, you don't know what day one day is for another than mm. All the days meld in together. But then when I hear the music coming on for off the ball, mm -hmm. I know it's 12 o'clock. It's a routine for people, isn't it? And it was, it's been a routine. And, and, and that's at a time as well when there was very little else in some people's mm -hmm. lives. And it was great. And then we had the wee bonus where, and of course, he particularly now had his critics as well. Uh, when we had Professor Jason Leach on for a wee weekly surgery every week he was amazing he was great concise clarity to the point with every question that he was asked uh helping folk in terms of the guy who wanted to come back from germany because his old mom in edinburgh had died and can i go on a plane what plane mm -hmm. can i go on when i come back how many can we have at the funeral da 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 and we professor leach was brilliant he just told them concisely he also and he took no pleasure in it I think at least three weddings he, he, he effectively cancelled right. on air. There was folk asking for advice, Jason, how's this all panning out? My daughter's due to get married mm -hmm. in eight weeks. We've got the place booked and all that. If we cancel it even right. up to next week, we still get our money back, right. you know? We, I would cancel it. He would say, mm -hmm. he did that, I think, about three times. And he was true to his word. He says, if you go ahead, you're going to have 20 guests here rather than... 140. Aye, but you really want. You know, I says, I'm sure that's maybe not what your daughter's mm. wanting. The memories when you look back on the photos and that, you know. Same thing, of course, was happening with folk with uh, funerals and all the rest of it. They had to think long and hard. Right, who's the 20 folk mm -hmm. that get the invite? You aye. know, so he was absolutely brilliant. And I've I've, I've backed that wee guy uh, fervently ever since because a couple of reasons you get folk who said, oh, SNP, Lick, Spittle, you know I always say it didn't matter if it was the Tories, Labour, the Lib Dems that were in power in Scotland, or even we Lord Such of the mm. monster raving loony party, <laughs> if you remember him, it would still have been Jason Leach that go to the gig. He, 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 you know, he, it wasn't a political booking, right? And then folk would say, the he's a dentist. Aye, what does he know uh, about COVID? And, and uh, I said, I no, he was, he was a dentist, I'll grant you that. 
But since then, in the past 13 years, he had done two public health degrees at mm. Harvard University no. in America. That's no bad. No. But then I even go to extremes with you. I say, I say you know what? What if he only was a dentist? No. It's not the worst profession no. for a guy to get involved in the medical world at a time of a pandemic no. when he's wanting to help out. He's a dentist. Well, if you'd have said... He's a rent boy. Aye. I might have said, I feared it was. I mean, what were we thinking? Of? This guy's a rent boy. Aye. We need him a job like that. But no, he was Aye. a dentist. And then he had 13, year, 13 years swatting at, at Harvard University to do these two public, you know. So it was an absolute nonsense. He, by his own admission, nobody was an expert in a global pandemic mm. because nobody had, had experience, unless you go back to the Spanish flu, I think Aye. it was in the 1910s. <laughs> Unless you, you were old enough to remember <laughs> that, which means nobody, nobody was an expert because they'd never dealt with anything like this before. But the information that he had at hand, the information that he was working with via the rest of the experts, and even taking that down to the guys that he bowed to, even your Chris Whitties mm -hmm. down in uh, London, who, you know, you rarely heard a criticism of that yeah. guy. You'd heard plenty for Boris Johnson and his cohorts, right? But Chris Whitty, great. And, oh, Professor Leach, always, always saluted him. Uh, but, you know, he was working on the science. He's a scientist. Mm -hmm. He was working on the science and he was brilliant with our listeners. I honestly, he was absolutely brilliant and I would never hear a word against him. Yeah. Fair dues. I wanted to ask you about the restaurant critic side of it as well. Right, she also Rest, done restaurant that reviewer. Long. Restaurant reviewer. I was never a restaurant critic or a food <laughs> critic. I always said to do that critic, such a harsh word. And MD would have said, again, we go back to uh, critics, your, mm -hmm. your, your detractors and all that. MD would have said, what, what, what does he know about food? So I think if you were a food critic, you would have liked to be the guy that might have had some experience in the industry mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. You know, restaurant reviewer because my remit was to go into the restaurants as Joe Blogs, mm -hmm. which you'll find 99.9% .9 of people that go into the restaurants Aye. are Joe Blogs. They go in there and they're hoping to get a nice meal and nice surroundings, get some decent grub, no pay over the top for it, and leave there leaving, uh, thinking that was a nice Aye. night. And when I started doing it for the record, when I joined the record in 1998, um, after my eight years at the Evening Times, um, I was in there to write a couple of columns a week, but my then editor, uh, just by coincidence, they were launching a magazine my first day I was in the paper on a Saturday in September 98. And he said, right, we've got this magazine coming up. He says, um, I want to add into your contract doing something for the magazine. Mm -hmm. So being a firm believer and trying to stick to what you know, or at least what you think you know about, I said, right, I'll do it if it's something I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, right, you don't just met me. What, what, what are your interests? And I said, well, I don't know if you've got anything about that, but I said, but I've got a 1998 Footloose and Fancy Free, Living in Moan, Living in Moan, if I'm being honest, <laughs> uh, and great active social life, right? Mm -hmm. No restraints, right? And I says, I've got a really active social life. And he went, right. He says, I want to do a restaurant review in here, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to be all arty farty Aye. and all fancy. And like maybe, dare I say it, some of the Sunday broadsheets, mm -hmm. half the pages about where the artichokes Aye. were sourced from and, you know, all that stuff, you know. Uh, he said, I just want it written as a punter, as, as guys, as women that go into restaurants, you know. I says, oh, come here, man. Uh, so I did it, and within a couple of weeks, it was weird, it really, really took off. And within a couple of weeks, out in the street and all that. Normally you get folk, aye, Tom, hello, well, they're shite. And, <laughs> aye, aye, he's got fucked last week. Oh, it was all about fuck, 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 fuck when you were out and about, you know. How do you hate Rangers? No, I don't. Rangers are having a tough time. And there's a few jokes about, how do you hate Celtic? Oh, no, aye. no, no, Celtic. I'm not, aye, right, fair enough, right. <laughs> and I never, ever shied away from that. Even in this day, I, I, I never shy away, let's say, for a pub. I live in Glasgow. I never shy away for a pub that is deemed a Celtic show aye. or a Rangers show. I'll, I'll go anywhere for a drink, anywhere to watch a fat and that. And, well, I, I, and I would like to think that there's a lot of folk that would would back me on this, guys that I've met in my travels, they'd maybe agree with me. If I meet a guy at the bar and all that, 
and he's might have a blether but if I'll blether away yeah, and yeah. get the boy a pint and all that you know I've got good antenna if there's a tiny 0.1% aimed at Hanks try to be a wee bit nasty and looking mm -hmm. looking for aye. a bit of bother that hope maybe I'll take the bait and react and, you know and I'm, I'm clever to that right but by and large even boys that come up and they're your sworn enemy in the pub to start with mm -hmm. once you maybe open their eyes to a wee couple right. of things and explain a couple, uh, and then they're your best pal you know so I'll never shy away from going out and about in Glasgow right and whether it's taxi drivers guys in the pub whoever it might be they're always worth a story mm -hmm. as well and I've always got if it was in my notebook with my pen you've always got the notes on your Aye. phone and you've always got a column to write or a show to date so you never let any of the, that stuff go to waste stories that you wouldn't get if you maybe watched the game that night in the house mm -hmm. solitary Aye. right you're much better than hooting about right but in that same uh, vein which I was saying about two or three weeks into doing the restaurant reviews wow there was this great change in my folk in the street and the pubs like, where are you eating this week Tom where are you right I'm going out with a bird tomorrow <laughs> night where, where do you recommend and I'm right is it Italian is it would you like Chinese is it, you know um, so the, the the restaurant thing really really took off and oh, it was great I mean I, I, I did it in total for about 22 years including the six years that I had a wee period at the Scottish Sun mm -hmm. and when I joined him what I call my wee Mo Johnston move <laughs> for the record to the Scottish Sun strictly for the money uh, they made me an unbelievable offer that I'd be embarrassed to tell any of my pals in the <laughs> papers but it must have been the last big move right sadly print newspapers are having a torrid time mm -hmm. and it's hey it's no fault I that's because she's right or shite it's technology Aye. it's like I'm saying Aye. folk open their phone now if they want to read the Daily Telegraph right. you know it's very very unfair to say ah, it's your fault it's you know Keith Jackson Bill Lecky it's, you know it's nothing to do with him right um, but um when the paper, I mean, doing the restaurant reviews, papers were through the roof at that period. Uh, for me, starting in 98, the internet was in its absolute infancy. Um, so it, it, it went absolutely mega. And for the 22 years that I did it in total, because when I went back then to the record, just at the almost at the start of COVID, they contacted me, I had a wee, a wee hiatus, the only time I'd been out in newspapers. Mm -hmm. When I finished up with the Scottish Sun, and again, what I'm saying about papers, that was costs. Aye. I, as much, well, there you go, I'm back, not main story. When they took me in there, and I write, right, good mm -hmm. deal. You know, I knocked hell out of it for six years, but when it came to pound shillings and pence, and they're looking, they're saying, oh, wait a minute. Aye. So we, I was a wee bit of luxury that they perhaps couldn't afford. Aye. And when it got to them, want me to maybe take silly money for the same job you know maybe a wee parting of the ways but you know it's quite happy in that because I'd be I'd, you know I'd been including going back to the old telly show and then doing mm -hmm. gigs and corporate things and the two two hour radio shows every week I was doing a hell of a lot mm -hmm. and by this time I had a young daughter and all that you know so uh, when the record came back in for me um, they were wanting me to do a, a, it was like a a, a covid chronicles thing right just keeping it light everybody was starting to get a wee bit it was like banging their head against Aye. a black wall with COVID. <clears throat> everybody was getting a bit naturally folks mental health complaints mm -hmm. went through the roof and all that it was a horrible thing so they were wanting to keep it a wee bit light elsewhere the wee funny things that had happened with COVID. so i went back and one of my old bosses had phoned me for the record i was enjoying having a wee break i must be honest my wife knew i would enjoy having a wee break for the papers but it's just when he hangs it's in your blood yeah, if you've right. been a motor mechanic you know and you walk by a guy who was fixing his car i bet you wouldn't be able to help yourself yeah. saying can i can i have a wee look mate can i help you so there was a wee bit of like that with me so i went back to the record but i thought there was no question anyhow but i wasn't going to say i'll go back and i'll do restaurant reviews i just thought not all day the two page spread that i, I still do mm -hmm. on a saturday i says that'll do me that's great i'll right. enjoy doing that I enjoy the writing takes me back to how i started out mm -hmm. if you like um but that is enough but for the 22 years that i did the the restaurants wow to i still need to pinch myself because to get paid to go out and fill your face Aye. in a different restaurant every week right around scotland and i did i put the i put the miles in uh there are some restaurant reviewers who i could accuse 
I've maybe stayed in their home patch and mm. all that. But I was writing for a national newspaper. That was very unfair. Just Glasgow, Glasgow, Aye. Glasgow, or through to Edinburgh. I would, I'd be everywhere. I'd, I'd be up, you know, layered, go way up between Inverness and Dingwall. I'd been to Sky, I'd been the borders. I'd been absolutely everywhere. It's a bit like the Rangers Celtic thing, though. You want a wide. You don't want to just focus on the one absolutely. place. Absolutely. So I went everywhere. I always say, whoever came with me, invariably one of my mates who, took a wee sky half work or maybe took a day off or whatever. And I would normally meet one of my pals uh, because I did it at a time I didn't drive. I've been driving now for 12 years, which mm -hmm. isn't long. Um, so laterally with the reviews, I would mail off no jump in the motor right. and go to the place, right? But I would meet maybe with one of my mates ordinarily at Central Station in Glasgow. If we were maybe going to go down south, mm -hmm. Ayrshire or whatever, yep. right? I would meet Queen Street Station We'd look at the board and say, oh, Perth, Dundee, Montrose, Forth or Aberdeen, we'll pick one of them. Mm -hmm. And for my mate, whoever came, it was a great day out for Because for the minute he sat in the train, the wee drinks trolley went by. <laughs> I think a small gin and tonic is required here. <laughs> then you'd get off the train, let's say, in Montrose, always a taxi rank at the train station, mm -hmm. jump in the taxi, how you doing, mate? Thankfully, by that point, been on the radio for a few years, mm -hmm. I keep forgetting a lot of folk know your voice. So even in the back of the taxi, boy, oh, Tom, it's yourself. We That's great. Because I'd say, I'm up to day review Aye. for the paper. Where do you recommend? Taxi drivers have always got an opinion. Aye. They always know the restaurants in their <laughs> town. Uh, and the boy would take us there. Fucking welly in with the, the meal. Nice wee bottle of wine. Don't mind if I do. Scribble down all my notes. Then put them away. Pay for the meal, mm -hmm. that was always the thing folk used to always ask, I bet you get in there and you get free food. <laughs> you didn't get free, yes, ultimately I did, once you had filed your expenses aye. to the paper. That was my job, aye. every month. You're still write paying articles. the restaurant. Aye. Aye. But it wasn't ever a review unless I paid. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is unless, until I'd paid and got my receipt and folded it away with my notes, and that's my job done. And until I had done that, and I was very, very, strenuous about us. There would be somebody that'd come out, you know, they couldn't recognise me or something, right? I think that's Tam Cowan, I think he's doing a review. And he came out, ah, oh, no charge to it. I'd say, no, no, I need, I need to get the charge mm -hmm. or else I've not done my job. I can't review it. The minute he said I can't review it, because mm -hmm. they want the coverage, aye. right? I can't review it, all oh, right, aye, okay, okay. And they'd give you the bill, right? And that was great. Cause it, it, it wasn't coming out of my pocket mm -hmm. anyhow. And then once a month, you would sit down, fill out your eckies, send them into paper and that was that but for there was no shortage of pals who were wanting to come with me because <laughs> you see it from their perspective they get the wee day trip Aye. they get the train travel of course I would pick up the, the train tickets uh, they would get the free feed Aye. they would get the wine uh, and then they didn't have to write a 1200 word Aye. article you had to stop the road Aye. <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant so Aye, there was no shortage of pals in that time so um, but that, that was a great and, and you know what I still kind of in fact, almost a wee exclusive for you, I'm, I'm in the throes of starting a, a kind of a restaurant review podcast. Nice. That, uh, you know, there's been, because I did it for so long and because a lot of folks still associate me with it, and I do quite a bit of stuff even online, my mm -hmm. Instagram, you get a lot of folk now. And I, I'm, I'm happy to date for them. I don't, I don't want anything. But you get loads of folks here. I've just started out damn business. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance you could come along, take some yeah. photos and that gives a wee bit of coverage? No, hands up. If I'm then going to go along, uh, I did a place I went to recently, this guy begging me in Edinburgh, any chance to come along? Then I, I was going to take a wee three course of offer. Didn't it cost him, cost Aye. him washers, Aye. right? But I, I, I can't be a monger, but right. right, I've got a family, I've got work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get through there and be out of poker. Aye, that, that would be you need your head examined. So I've done quite a lot of that online and I've got a list of places that I keep in a note on my phone. A, places that have invited me oh bring your bring your family bring your pals you know just trying to get a wee bit of coverage going and thankfully because i've got a big following on that um that then it has been helpful to folk but um but the uh so i, I still do a wee bit of that there but there's been wee nibbles since i finished doing it in the newspapers about doing a food Pod. I did a short loved one in here for six weeks mm -hmm. called Scoff the Ball and uh, it was me and it was mainly me talking to kind of like suppliers of food like one of these great maybe beef suppliers or a guy at the 
through uh, in the East Coast that made all their own cured meats and all that and mm. all their salamis, pastramis, and they end up selling out to hotels and restaurants right. and that. Uh, I spoke to uh, the wee guy, uh, John Gall at Browning's The Bakery, mm -hmm. who are famous for the Kelly Pies. Yep. It was talking to folk like that. But the only thing was, particularly when I spoke to the owner of the Anstruther Fish Bar, mm -hmm. the famous fish and chip shop up there in Fife, uh, it was COVID as well we made uh, these in. Right, okay. And I couldn't go up to the chip shop Aye. and see everything and chat to him mm -hmm. while he's putting a big fish into the, the hot fat of it. Mm -hmm. So it was done with me, he'd phones on in a studio, mm -hmm. him up on the phone in the shop, Aye. the Wi Fi was raw. It's it, not it, the it full was full experience. Raw. No, it wasn't a full experience, but they were fairly well received. Folk that listened to them seemed to like them. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, when other folk have said about doing a kind of food, uh, podcast um, and again I would date totally for the the Joe Bloggs perspective mm -hmm. um, and I'd be quite keen in doing it so in terms of doing something I don't know how I'm going to get the bloody time to be honest with you <laughs> but I'm really really busy now um, thankfully I'm no, I'm no moaning and mm -hmm. unlike my pals that I spent the day with yesterday air races at my mate's birthday I could see the relief in their faces getting a day off work because they were doing Aye. Some of them just, their jobs are just shite. They're mm -hmm. maybe sitting at a desk or whatever, you know. So I love having that a day. I'm blessed in that respect. I absolutely enjoy having that a day. Um, but so I'd never complain about uh, workload or that. And I, if I could squeeze in a wee, a wee afternoon somewhere doing a wee foodie Aye. podcast, because it's only out of the various strands of media mm -hmm. as much as I've done. You can, and particularly you know, you know yourself it would be like during Covid aye. I must have done in the old Zoom I think I never aye. thought has been a once upon a time a wee bit of a technophobe but how something like Zoom suddenly became the aye. norm and you know there'd be guys saying that so I never refuse a request to do a podcast because when I was saying to you like and in fact I did say it earlier when I had a mentor a guy like Philip Duffer mm -hmm. who was instrumental in me sitting here the room and in the BBC I had a lot of great guys as well starting my newspaper career who were brilliant with me and as a result of that you feel now it's your duty at, at 54 uh, I'll be 55 in April mm -hmm. 55 or as the Celtic fans call it one <laughs> but we'll not go there but uh, I will be 55 so I've had, I've done a hundred of these and mm -hmm. it's young guys whatever who contacted me loads of them through Covid as you'll recall damn I've set up a wee podcast can I? and I said aye absolutely I'll say that a Tuesday night or a Thursday night it's good I'll be at my desk couldn't mm -hmm. go anywhere aye. and I would have poured myself a glass of wine mm -hmm. sat down in my wee office in the house and got the zoom on and away they went and uh, that was that so I, I think it's a wee bit of your duty to do that aye. it's not quite the you know the looking for the MBA or anything like that and Bob Geldof trying to <laughs> ease famine in Africa but a lot of folk helped me out when I was starting Aye. and you seem to forget that for young guys I'll be deemed as a, an old guy now myself and an old fart and uh, or is it that guy again he's been on the radio for years and all that so aye it's just you want to give something back you know 100% see from see from your point of view obviously and I'm no I'm not putting you to pasture yet what's been the best time of your career from your point of view what, what bit have you enjoyed like the most <sighs> Well, you know what? I've been asked you that, would you prefer? And the, 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 all the, the, the different things I've done, I love them all for <clears throat> their own particular reason. Now, the radio, what I love about the radio, and there you go, I keep seeming to back myself up here. When I told you about the time you were asked to stay on air for mm. another hour, great, you can do that in the radio. Aye. Right? I keep the mic switched on, that's that. You can do a radio show. If I slept in, and I'm only 10 minutes up the road for you, right? If I slept in, I know for a fact I could still go through these swing doors that are next to us, go up into the studio with my pyjamas on, Aye. with minutes left to spare, but I could still put out a radio show. So that's the great thing about radio. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's lively, it's it's live, it's uh, happening now. There's been a lot of things while we've been on air. Uh, I'll give you a good example. It was while we were on air and Craig Levine was our guest, because I'll never forget this show. It was announced that Sean Connery had died. Right one of the Scottish mm -hmm. icons. Now that was announced in within the first, I think, half hour. Yeah, two hour show. That show just went like that after mm -hmm. that. Every day then, Sean Connery tributes, 
best bond all mm -hmm. the rest of it you know it, it, it was absolutely amazing and that's the joy of live radio the joy of if you like my first love the written word is that i've all i've never worked in a newspaper office whether it was even at times daily record scottish sun or daily record again i sat in my office i have classic fm on because mm -hmm. i can't listen to i love my music and i've got very wide taste but I can't listen to any of lyrics when, when I'm think, thinking of words uh, myself, right? So classical music, I think we got me into that years ago. Love classical music, love going to classical concerts and all that. So, but I love almost the, uh, it's almost quite therapeutic. The solitude almost to sitting there myself, mm -hmm. my keyboard, my screen, and being able to just correct that and, you know, make that a comma rather than a semicolon. I just like all that. There's mm -hmm. something about it I like, right? And then seeing the finished, as much as some folk will say, well, it seems a bit dated now, but writing something one day and then seeing it in hard copy the next, which must be the, the great feeling a, a newly published author would get yeah. to see their work yeah. in print On a shelf for the somewhere. first time, you know? So I love that as well. And then for all the years when we did Offside, the old telly show, for 10 years, wow, 10 years on the telly on a Monday night, um, then that was great. I can't lie because the money, because it was telly, <laughs> was superb. Aye. It was uh, it was great dough and getting paid that great money every week. They, well, it, was, it wasn't like well, with the radio you're on every single week. We were, we would normally do 20 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd do a run of 10 maybe for the February, March, through to the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So you could catch a lot of that drama. Yep. And then we'd maybe do the 10 weeks preceding Christmas, working your way back. And we did and we did that for 10 years. And that was great because you were always, which I loved then, even up to now, live gigs and all that. Mm -hmm. You were in front of a live audience. Aye. When we did the radio, it's me and Stuart and a guest. And no other folk you see are through the screen, producer sound engineer then the buttons um <clears throat> so the live audience aspect of uh the telly was great and again with that immediacy what i liked about that we did every show on a monday as live we started the recording around about half seven quarter to eight and it had to go at ten thirty-five at right. night so there was no time to fuck Aye. about we didn't have editors pouring over them and tweaking we only ever stopped if if there was a problem with a camera mm -hmm. or a light bulb popped or something like that or somebody took on well only happened once in the audience that was the only reason we'd ever have stopped uh, a recording so there was that immediacy in it as well and again having been trained on that with the newspaper and the radio before I went into the every show uh, starting the recording at half seven quarter to eight I must would have been to watch all the tea time news bulletins Aye. in a very off chance Aye. Something popped Aye, up. Something, something. something mad that Ali McCoyst had done. That if we could get a wee joke in about that, mm -hmm. and folk at home had watched that in the news earlier that night, think, fuck, good on them. That was to get a wee joke about that. And, you know? So that was always a Aye. big thing. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've genuinely loved doing the telly. Money was great. <laughs> Love doing the radio for the immediacy of it and sitting in the studio and inventing stuff. Never, never having a scrap, never right. having to stick to what you thought you were going to be talking about, you know. Loved in the, the the writing newspaper because it's in my blood and I love, I'm still a newspaper -a holic. I'm one mm -hmm. of the last guys in Scotland that gets the, the pile of them delivered to my front door every day. And then love, as I'll be doing later on the night, live stuff, me, a mic, an audience, no censors, <laughs> no BBC rule book up to a certain extent. <laughs> And I love doing that as well, because mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing like, you know, there's, there's nothing like the sound of laughter Aye. for a live audience. I keep I keep trying to tell that to Susan Calman. I says you've no idea what you're missing. <laughs> it's uh, tremendous. <laughs> Other Scottish comedians are available for that joke. <laughs> But uh, aye, so I've, I've been very, very lucky in what a day. I love what a day. And the only thing that I would say for even for folk that want to, everyday life wants to have a wee go. You know, you know. And I'm I'm blessed that we've got a great audience for off a brilliant audience for off the ball so they must like so i'm mm. doing we always had great viewing that's how we lasted 10 years for christ's right. sake on the telly and that's how i've got away with it for 35 years <laughs> in newspapers you know so somebody out there must like us but um you know the 
it's for the I, I, I just feel blessed at what I do and I, 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 I would love to do it as long as I possibly can you know and my barometer for that the good thing is with me and Stuart Stuart will be where are we now Stuart will be 72 this year jeez right no exactly that always surprises folk when I tell them that and Stuart likes cutting about in the hoodies and all he's that he's looking good for it the 300 pound trainers and everything <laughs> you know so he's still a dude right but Stuart at 72 does a radio with his eyes shut mm. you know actually literally sometimes <laughs> I've got to Stuart give me a nudge right we've got visitors <laughs> But uh, no, so uh, you know, so I've I've got I mean, uh, there's there's all these milestones you got. You know, right, uh, thirty years this year you're off the ball. You know, oh, that, that sounds like a good time for maybe stepping. You know, I'm fifty five right. in my head. There's a lot of certainly me and my pop, so I don't. I, I wish I felt fifty five <laughs> my head. Stupid young boy, daft young boy at times. You know, so there's no question of me thinking. I could just chuck that right. and enjoy it too much. Mm -hmm. Get back to my some of my pals yesterday. They can't wait. Now I, all, all the boys that was with yesterday, they're all, the labs are about, about three or four years older than me. Can't wait till they're able to walk right. away Retire. for the drudgery right. of the day job. But uh, how dare I uh, say that about in that day? It would it would be embarrassing. I always say that in all the years that we've done the radio, if I as as my want. I've been very lucky as well, unlike Stuart with Perth and the location of where the BBC is. I can get to every single Mullerwell home game. Mm. If it's a three o'clock kickoff, I know the games are here, there, and everywhere. Right. But if Mullerwell at three o'clock at Fir Park, or indeed, you know, Ibrox Park, mm -hmm. St. Marin, uh, even down to Kilbarn like that, M77's a breeze, then I can go and see my team. And it helps now that tricky when we're doing the lunchtime and the evening show. Mm -hmm. And then I think because when they started showing games at half five, that's how they first moved us to a Sunday. Right. Suits me right down to the grand. The Sunday show's got a different feel to it. We love doing the Sunday shows because we never know. We finish a Saturday show and we don't know what we're going to talk about coming in on a Sunday because right. anything could happen right. with the football overnight. We more often than know now we come on a Sunday, maybe after a game or just before a big game. And we never know what's going to be in the Sunday paper. So we love doing the Sunday show. You can't wait to get in. Um, but with the Motherwell games then, I'm able to get games at Fir Park, for example. I have my season ticket for, God, 45 years. And I got my first one on my 10th uh, birthday. So nice. I'll be 45 years this year, Christ. Um, but I'll go in Fir Park. I can leave here, get out of the car park, hope that the traffic's all right, get out of Motherwell. And I can be in my seat in the main stand where there's about seven or eight years all sat together. Have done so for years for about quarter to three, ten to three. Not once to sum up about what I do for a living. Not once when I've finished the show and gone out again have I edged into my seat and said to my pals, oh, I've just come from my work. Because Aye. they would say, come here, you <laughs> fucking booting the boys and all that. You know what I mean? When they have put in a graft, Aye all week at uh, some fucking thing that would give me the fear mm -hmm. a real job you know what I mean <laughs> so I, I I never that is my work that is how I earn my living all these things but I would never hammer home the fact compared to boys out digging the roads right. or nurses right. in the NHS I, I would never I would never overdo the, the work aye hard day aspect aye <laughs> one last question for you right brilliant and it's not about Motherwell right uh, um Obviously, from a journalist point of view, it is changing now. It's, it's oh, more of a digital one. But for, yep. for people just coming into it, what would you say from an advice point of view based in your career? I would say uh, take advice for people who have been there and done it. Mm -hmm. Try to, if possible, and this is probably even more relevant now with the, the internet age, the online journalism rather than print journalism. If there's something that you're into, if you've got a particular wee, you know, a particular wee interest mm -hmm. in something, for black and white films to, you know, uh, badminton, right. you know, have a wee go at that. There's always an audience out there for people, and right. you can sometimes find a wee niche, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it, because basically anything that is online now is deemed published. Right. You know, your work has been published if it's been put up online. Now, whereas back in the day, the classic, and I did that as well, 
it had been the summer job with your local paper. Mm -hmm. and I did that with the Motherwell Times um, when I was about to leave school, did the summer, and you were putting captions onto wedding photos or you were joy of joys because they knew I was a Motherwell fan. I get sent up to an, an Arbroath Motherwell pre-season friendly and wow, what a big deal that was. I was the match reporter uh, for the Motherwell Times and it was great. But when I think, I still remember that day fondly, when I think of the interest that gave me, and that was because I was interested in the football, mm -hmm. and they knew that, Aye. and I get the wee chance of doing that. So, you know, there are still, you know, because all the stuff, as much as, you know, print sales are not what they were, they're trying their best, and it's not the same as picking up a paper, Aye. but they're trying their best to get all the newspaper stuff online. Mm -hmm. And it annoys folk with pop-ups and all right. that shit. It's really, you don't get that when you're sitting reading your paper, mm -hmm. right? But they try to get all this content online. So there are still editors, content editors, out there looking for stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, that, that would be my advice. If there's a wee something that you're into, you know? And, you know, I, I, another example I'll give you, Alan Burroughs is now the chief executive at Aberdeen, what a mm. rise he has. If you work back the way with him, chief executive at Aberdeen, chief executive at Muddle, on I'd guess a third of the money he was on now. Mm -hmm. Before that, he was head of media at Motherwell, dealing with all the press and all the journalists. Before that, he was one of the, the main guys on a Motherwell message board, Steel yes. Men Online. Right. He was one of the, what is it they call it, a moderator. Right, okay. Right? And just because when Motherwell were trying to come out of the dark ages mm -hmm. and, and try to have some kind of social uh, social kind of network uh, 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 kind of presence, then, oh, who's the guy that does the, the, mm -hmm. the stuff for the fans? And they brought him in. Before you know it then, he was gone in the pre-season training trips with the team and he was putting stuff online. Right. And then that became him getting the job in charge of the media. Right. And then when Leanne Dempster left, mm -hmm. he got the job as first general manager, then effectively chief executive. Then he was so good at that job, he go, and I'd say that as a Murrow fan, he get the promotion, got into a big, big club like Aberdeen. So in a strange sort of way, what I was explaining to you about my career, mm -hmm. his kind of right. mirrors mine as mm -hmm. well. I, I don't know, Alan had been up to now, I don't even know what he did, what he was planning to do. I don't know how he earned a living when he was only doing the, the message board stuff and mm -hmm. all that, I've no idea. Uh, what he was into, I just always see him as the mother will guy. Um, but again, there was that interest that he had, Aye. and he certainly cashed in on it. That's amazing. Tom, it's been a pleasure. No worries. Absolute pleasure. You're Appreciate absolutely it. welcome. Thank I hope you that so much. Too long. No, but I went. Put on. <laughs>